Hi, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Bill Stone. I've been doing leaded glass since the 1970s. Uh, today we're doing a video for beginners or someone who may be interested in trying to do some leaded glass and uh, doesn't quite know where to go or what tools they need. In this video, I've covered just about every step there is to making a project. This project is a stained glass leaded solar lantern for uh, to be hung outside in the sun. It can be on the patio or on a shepherd's hook or wherever else you have a lot of sun in the yard. The uh, project is uh, simple. It's very straight cut. You don't need any special tools for it. This is the project right here. This is what it's going to look like when it's done. It's a three-sided project. It's just straight cut glass and then leaded and soldered. Uh, the uh, solar panel that use, goes in it uh, is, is this guy right here. It goes in the top of it. This is basically the top off the garden stakes that you buy to put in your yard. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy the uh, video and uh If you're brand new to leaded glass, there's a few tools that you do need. Uh, most of them are fairly inexpensive, so uh, let's get started in what we're looking at. Uh, you're going to need a glass cutter, and what you want to do, you want to try to buy a good quality one. Uh, this one's uh, fairly inexpensive. It's called Studio Pro. It's at uh, Hobby Lobby. It's got a nice uh, oil-fed tip on it, so that works very well. Uh, you're going to need some running pliers. The running pliers are primarily used for... Uh, uh, snapping the glass after they've been scored with the cutter. Uh, so it's nice to have. Uh, a lot of the glass you can just snap by hand, but uh, sometimes you have some small pieces where these work well. These are called grosing pliers. They're primarily for really small. If you got like an eighth inch of glass going along the edge and you, you want to try to take that off, you would use these pliers. Also, some people use these pliers to actually nibble around the edges of some uh, glass to make it fit exactly where they want it to go. Uh, uh, I prefer to use a grinder for stuff like that, but uh, you can use these. This pair of cutters are used for cutting the lead came. So you'll see us using these when we get ready to put the project together. And uh, so uh, we'll, we'll work with that. This one right here is used primarily for spreading the came. Sometimes when you cut the, the lead, it will collapse a little bit and this helps spread it open. Also used well if you have some glass that's fairly thick. So uh, you just put it in the channel and you just push it out. Then we have an assortment of rulers uh, uh, used, usually used for cutting uh, that I use to space out in this project since it's going to be all straight cuts. We'll use those. Uh, a couple of pins. I use a, usually use a Sharpie Ultra Fine and just as a, a fine tip pin. Uh, use a uh, stainless steel brush. I use this primarily when we get ready to solder. We'll use it in between the the lead to knock off any oxidation on the lead so our solder will flow nice and, and smoothly. And we have a flux. This is a, a water soluble. It uh, has uh, no odor, no smoke. Uh, I've had good luck with this one, so I like it. And last but not least, we're going to need a solder. And this primary this is a 6040 solder. I like it because it melts at a fairly low temperature and it flows very well. And this soldering iron is uh, made by Waller. It's 100 watt. And the th reason I like this one so much is the tip itself dictates how hot it gets. This has a 700 degree tip in it. A lot of the other soldering irons use a rheostat. A rheostat changes the voltage up and down to change the temperature. The problem with those is sometimes the, when you're changing the temperature, uh, when you turn it down, you turn it down too low. Then when you turn it back up, then it's too hot. So uh, you have to be careful with it. And one of the reasons it's important to have the temperature correct is that when you're melting the solder, the temperature between the solder and the lead is very, very close. And if your soldering iron is too hot, just about the time that you get your, lead, your uh, solder melted, the lead will be melting also, and that will make quite a mess. So you don't want to do that. So anyway, that's the tools that we need to do this. Here I bought uh, probably about 20 years ago. It has a factory eye shield on it. Uh, same principle. This one here is wide open. I use this one for grinding or any any other pieces of glass that I wanted to use. 
So a grinder is nice to have. It's not essential that you have it to get started, but it's a good idea to uh, think about getting one later down the line. And another thing, sometimes you can find them too, where uh, uh, people have started to do leaded glass and then for some reason they've changed their mind or maybe they've gotten tired of it and they want to get rid of their stuff. Uh, you see you see it in some throwaway papers that you have. If you have a local newspaper that uh, that they list uh, things for free or for, uh, you know, quite inexpensive, you can finally sometimes find glass grinders on there. Or like I say, eBay, they have uh, stuff floating around all the time. Well, it's time to start and stretch some cane. The uh, purpose of doing this is it strengthen, strengthens the cane and also hardens it just a little bit. So anyway, this is the cane right here. This is our H cane. This is the cane that goes in between the glass. We're going to put it in this little vise right here. This is a cane vise or a lead vise. Just hooked to the table right here. You just tap on a little bit here. Go down to the end of your lead. These uh, lead strips come to you uh, in six foot lengths. You just take a pair of pliers, you grab them, and you give a couple good pulls. And that's all that's required. When you do that, keep an eye on it though, because some of these uh, lead came have a seam in them and when the seam is where it's made in the factory sometimes it will break right there so you want to be sure you got yourself braced a little bit the other came that we're going to use is a u came that's this one right here i'm going to put it in with the soft edges up because it can bite into the vice a little bit better tap it down and come down to the end here and we'll just give it a couple tugs it pulls a little bit harder and doesn't stretch near as far give it a couple tugs and that's it so that's all there is to doing that uh, if you don't want to invest in a lead vise uh, you can use a vise that's on your work table or if you don't have one of those if you have a c-clamp uh, you can use a c-clamp just clamp it to the edge of the table and uh, you can use that just as well so we'll move on to the next project all right we're going to make a little drawing here to determine how big we're going to make our solar panels and most of the most of the time unless you just want to make one that's uh, just real large, uh, we're going to make this one so that the solar light fits into it fairly tight. And so the thing that's going to determine that will be the solar light itself. And uh, what we're using for these projects are basically these garden stakes that you see uh, you buy at the hardware store or a Walmart or Amazon, whatever. And they are basically a solar panel on the top. They have a reflector down below so we're not interested in that part. We're only interested in this part right here. So we're going to take that off. On the underside, you have a small white light bulb. The white tab here is protecting the battery from being activated. Once that's activated, uh, the sun will charge the battery through the solar panel. And at nighttime, there's a, a photo cell in here that will turn this on. And it will burn for oh, sometimes uh, anywhere from... Uh, four to uh, eight hours depending on the quality of the uh, of the solar light itself uh, i've seen some burn all night long i've seen some of them burn barely four hours so uh, the quality on these is uh, kind of all over the place but if you think about it, they're not very expensive either so to do this we're going to do a couple things uh, we could try to measure this but since we're making this uh, a three-sided thing it makes it a little more complicated so here's the easiest way to do it Going to take a T square. We're going to lay it down here. We're going to draw a straight line. We're going to take our solar light upside down here. We're going to pull it about an eighth of an inch away from that line we just drew. We're going to make a circle on our paper. We're going to put our T square back on here. We're going to use a 60 degree triangle. This 60 degree triangle, if you look at it real close, has a little indentation right here. Happens to be an eighth of an inch, which is perfect for what we're going to do. We're just going to take this, let's put it up against our T-square. We're going to go right at the edge of our circle. We're going to go out to our eighth of an inch. Going to make a line. Going to turn it over. Up, up against, right up against the circle of our solar light. Going to go out our eighth of an inch. Going to measure that with a ruler across the points here came out to be exactly four and one half inches that's going to be perfect so that's the minimum size of our panel if we make it any smaller the 
solar light won't fit down inside this when it's done. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna make it four and a half inches at least. So we're gonna go from there. So the next thing is we're going to put together a form to actually build this at four and a half inches. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that in the next video. All right, so now we're gonna build the form for our solar panels. Uh, we're going to use some small pieces of uh, wood that I've cut. I usually use these, I make these out of a, a piece of three quarter inch pine. Uh, this is a three quarter inch way here. I set up my table saw with the gate set at quarter of an inch and just take and run these board, run a board through there and cut these off. So they work out really well. They're nice and uniform. And uh, so we'll get ready to use these. You can see these have been used probably a, a hundred times. So we made a lot of these things. So anyway, we'll get started. So we're going to need a square first. And uh, I'm going to use a, a uh, carpenter square. You can use any type of square that you may have around. And we're going to set our first piece in here. It's just going to be, this is our header board here. We're going to take some small brads and we're just going to tack it down. So we just use a couple of these. We don't need to nail this down forever. I will put one more in here just to be sure. All right, so that's our header. So now we're going to need two pieces that go along here for the sides. So we're going to lift this out of here. I'm going to take and turn this around. I'm going to bring this down here and we're going to take one of our side pieces here and we're going to put it right in here. Now, You'll notice we have a little notch right here. Uh, that's going to be uh, uh, open for where we're going to put our hanger. We're going to put a hanger on all three of these panels so that we can uh, we can hang a chain to it and we can hang it outside either in the patio or on a shepherd's hook or, or wherever else you would like to hang it. So by using the square that makes this be perfectly straight. So we'll just take and tack this one down. We'll get that tacked down real quick. Push it up tight against your square here. Make sure it's up against the square good and tight. And we'll do one more right in the middle here. Okay, so we talked earlier about uh, uh, how the how the different uh, pieces of lead go in here, and we talked about the fact that uh, even though this is going to be four and a half inches, and the pieces of glass that we cut, if you if you gang those all together, they only equal four inches. So the reason that we're going to be able to use uh, this at four and a half inches with four pieces of glass that only equal uh, uh, four four inches is because the lead itself makes the system grow. For instance, this lead right here, this is the H came. The heart of this lead right here is a 32nd of an inch. So each time we cut stick one of these in here, we the, the project grows. Uh, we're using a 732nds came. This is across the crown on the top. The uh, U-shaped came, which is going to go around the outside edge. That looks like this one here. And this one here is a sixteenth of an inch. So uh, we're going to have two of those. So right there, we've added an eighth of an inch. So we're going to kind of cheat here and find out exactly where to do this. So we're going to take a piece of cane, which would represent our header. And we're going to stick it in here like this. And we're going to take this one and stick it in here like that. And I've cut these, I've cut these on a 45 degree angle. So when they go together, they will, they will match. Uh, that's not super critical. If it's not off exactly perfect, uh, sometimes you're, when you get ready to solder it, it'll be your friend. Now, uh, a lot of YouTube videos you probably watch where they're using horseshoe nails. We're using push pins. They look like this. They have a 5 8 inch pin. They have aluminum top on them. We're going to stick this right in here. And we're going to stick one right in here. And then we're going to take our glass. So we're going to, we need, we need one 
inch and three quarter by two inches high by inch and three quarter. So we're going to put it in here. And we're going to slide it over and we'll sit it right in here. And now we're going to take, and we're just going to use this came, this came here. We're not going to cut it to any particular length right now. So we're going to set that in there. We need a one inch piece. I'm going to set our one inch piece in here. Okay, make sure it's sitting in there tight. We'll take another piece of H came, put it in here. We're going to get a three quarter inch piece, which is right here. We're going to set it in here. And the last piece is going to be our half inch piece. So, yeah, we'll just put a green one in there just for the heck of it. And we're going to mix these all up when we get ready to, to make this uh, in our next video. So there's all our pieces together. Then we're going to take our U came again, which is going to finish it off. And then we're going to sit in our next guide here for it. So we're going to put this in here like that. We'll put our square back down. And we have a little bit of an issue right here because this is sticking over, so we're not going to be able to get right up against it. So we'll just take another piece of our uh, little three-quarter inch board that we use for framing. We'll push this back out, and we're going to stick this right here. This lets us come in right against it. And we'll push that out to be square. We'll take and tack this down. Okay, we want to make sure it's up tight against the square right here, which it is. Let's take and tack that down. Okay, and we'll put one more right here in the middle. Just to kind of hold it. All right, so let's take our square and see if it uh, came out what we want. Came out exactly four and a half plus the sixteenth, so it came out to four and nine sixteenths. So that's perfect. Now, the proof, if we did this right, if these are perfectly straight. I should be able to take this with my fingernails and I should be able to push this straight out just like that. So that's what we need. So that created our form. So in the next video, when we come back, we're going to start to build inside this and create our panels. All right, we're going to cut some last uh, for this project. And uh, we talked about this a little bit. Our glass is going to be uh, two inches wide so uh, or two inches tall so anyway we're going to look at a couple pieces of glass here this is called a wispy glass that you can see the wisp going up and down i like to cut this with the uh, grain all going the same way or or uh, you don't want to cross these up because it won't look well good on your project so since it's going to we're going to cut these into two inch strips right here so we're just going to put these up against a backstop and we're going to use a combination of a couple rollers I have a old steel ruler there that's an inch and then I like to cut up against this plastic one and we're just going to take our glass cutter just set it right in here you don't have to push real hard just give it a score move it along small pieces like this you can take and just snap them with your hand uh, if you want to use your running pliers if you're concerned about maybe getting cut or so forth you can use those you would just take these and you would put them right on the score line and you would take and snap it. So just put your fingers in here and just snap it apart. So that's our two inch piece. This piece of glass, uh, because of the style of it, uh, it doesn't really have a pattern going up or down. It has some little, little lines going through it. So we'll just take that and we'll stick it in here. Try one, when you're cutting, try to always cut on the smooth side. Um, you'll see on a lot of YouTube videos, uh, people are cutting glass all kinds of different ways. After you play with it for a while, uh, you'll get in, you'll get your own technique. I suggest if you're going to get started in this and you want to play with it, uh, 
just get some window pane glass, just clear glass. You can get it at the hardware store and uh, practice cutting on that before you get your good glass and start cutting on it. So anyway, put your cutter down, try to hold it straight up and down if you can, and then just give it a slight score. You don't have to score it really hard. Here again, you can put your hands in here and just pop it down. Okay, so we've talked earlier about what size glass we're going to use. We're going to have one piece at one and three quarter. We're going to have one piece at one, one piece at three quarter, and one piece at a uh, half inch. So anyway, we've got a set of combination of rulers to come up with that. So we're going to cut a couple here of the, uh, cut a couple of the one and three quarter right here. We'll put a couple of these in here like this. You can cut a couple of these at a time if the glass is the same thickness. But as you start to play with this, you're going to find that uh, your glass is, uh, some of it's thicker than others. And uh, I notice right here, this particular piece of glass is uh, not really straight on the end right here. So if you have a, a mechanical uh, square like this, you can just take it, put it in here like this. Hold it here and just take your cutter, make a line. Now these little tiny pieces like this, if you look real close, it's right close to the edge. Those are the ones you want to use your running pliers with. So you take and put your pliers in here and snap that. Now that's straight up and down, so that'll work better. So we'll put this in here like that. We're going to use a combination. This is the aluminum ruler we talked about earlier in the tools. Uh, it's got three quarter across the back, half an inch across the front. So we're going to set it in here at three quarter and then we're going to add our one inch to it. And we're going to take and we're going to make a couple cuts. And if you're going to cut multiple ones, don't just go racing across there. Go up to that one and then go over the gap and go on to the next one. And here again, you don't have to push real hard on the cutter. You just want to really score it. And you want to make a little line like that and just put your hand in there and go ahead and snap that done. Okay, so then we're going to need a one inch piece. I'm going to just cut one of these so you'll get the idea here. We'll move it up here so you can see it better. One inch piece here. Here again, the one inch piece you can just keep and snap. We're going to need a three quarter inch piece. So we're going to use this aluminum ruler again here, half on one side, three quarter here. I like to use it, uh, the tall part of, the, of this for the glass cutter helps support it. So you just take and put it up here against this. Kind of tap on that. Be sure it's back against your backstop. Put your cutter here. Here again. Not a lot of pressure. Go ahead and make a score. So that's our three-quarter piece. And then last but not least, we need our half-inch piece. So put your cutter in here and make your score. Uh, when you get down to the half inch piece, you can snap it like that. But if you're concerned that uh, you know might it might you know you're not that familiar with it, or you might cut yourself. Go ahead and use your running pliers, or if you like, just use your running pliers all the time. You just pick them up, take your pliers, you put it right where the score line is, and you take and cut it like that. So we ended up here. We've got our one and three quarter. We've got our one inch. We got a three quarter inch and we got our half inch. So anyway, I'm going to go off camera here. I'm going to cut the rest of these and then we'll come back and we're going to do multiple colors. So we'll have a whole bunch of these. All right, we're back. As you can see, we cut a whole bunch of these. We've got way more than we need, but uh, <clears throat> we can go ahead and we can pick and choose the colors we want to put in these. And remember, we're going to stagger them across the, uh, the width of our, our panels as we get ready to make them. So, uh, we've got lots of them to go here again. Uh, while, uh, while we're off camera, I went ahead and cut the headers. The headers of the piece is going to go across the top. They're the opaque glass, and that's these three over here. Uh, you notice I've got arrows marked on them. The reason for that is I want these to all sit in on the header going the right direction. So uh, this was cut out of one piece of glass, and so you can see here uh, they're all going to go the same direction. So this will this will just make the job look a little nicer. You like to always put your job with like this is the the wispy glass. 
Do you see the running up and down? We cut all of these up and down. This is the water glass. It's going up and down. And the ripple glass doesn't really go up and down, but you, you can get a little different look. So you want to be sure to cut those in the right direction. So anyway, uh, we're going to get ready to put our project together now. So we'll be back on the next video. All right, we're finally back. We're going to go ahead and uh, finally build this panel. This will be one of the three that we're going to make. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to take our u came, which is this guy right here. I've cut the ends on a 45 right here. We're going to take another piece of u came, which will be for our header. It's also cut on a 45. You'll notice it has a notch in it. That's for where our hanger is going to go through. But it also has a 45 on each end. So we're going to take our down pieces. We're going to stick it in here. We're going to take our header piece, which is this one here. We're going to take our cotter pin that we made for our hanger. It's 3 32nd uh, zinc plated cotter pin. It goes into the slot here with the notch. It goes inside this piece of came and that comes down and slides in there. We're going to put a pin in it. We're going to come over to this side. We're going to put our lead down. We're going to put a pin in it. And I move these pins down just a little bit so we can take our header glass. It's this one here. Remember we took and ground a little slot in here. Uh, that's going to be where the cotter pin goes. So when you put this together, it's going to look like this. The cotter pin is going to be actually sitting in that slot right there. So that makes the, that'll make the glass straight all the way along here so we won't have a situation where we start to get cocked. If you don't have a grinder and you can't do this, just take your cotter pin, set it on here like this. Take one of these cotter pins and cut it in about four or five pieces here and just take a couple pieces and use white glue and just put a little piece here and a little piece here so that it'll be straight across the bottom here. Otherwise, it'll start crooked, and as it builds, you'll get it'll get worse. So that's the way you want to handle it. This header piece slides into in here. We're going to just move our pins to the back of this now, and we're going to slide it all the way down. It's going to trap right in here. If you want to, you can take and tap it just a little bit, but be careful. Don't go banging on it too hard; you'll break it. That's our piece. Then we're going to take a piece of H came, which looks like this. We're going to set it in here. We're going to mark it. It's going to go right across here. After we get it marked, we're going to cut it, set it on an angle, slide it in. And you want it to slide in it's real smooth. See, this is going to be just a little bit too tight right here. If you push that in there, it's going to be bowed. And your project's not going to lay straight. So just take your shears. Give it a very small trim. That's what you're looking for right there. Put a stick pin in here to hold it. Take your first piece of glass. Set it in here. And when you set it in here, make sure you have the nice side of the glass up. You have a textured side and a smooth side. So uh, we want the texture side up because this will be the front side of the, of the panel. Then you're going to take... Your H came again, you're going to, with your dikes that you cut with create a point on the end. So you want to cut that off. Then you're going to take and you're going to put it in here. And when you cut this, you want to cut it just a little bit shorter than the glass because when we get ready to put this back together, I'll show you why. Uh, you have to allow for the other piece of lead that's going to crawl across the top. So this goes in here like that. And then the reason you have to cut it short is so when this one goes in, it has a place to go. If you cut it too long, you're going to bend this piece and it'll go, it'll, it'll look crooked in here. So you don't want to do that. Okay, so we're going to take our three quarter inch piece. We're going to set it in here. We'll take our H came again. We'll take and cut it. Slide it in here. And if you want to, you can, you can pre-cut a bunch of these if you wanted to. But for show and tell here, we're going to do it this way. Uh, so you get an idea of what we're doing. Okay, we'll put our half-inch piece in here. 
This one here, uh, by the way, this is the right side up here. The water, this is water glass. You can usually tell the water side because this will be smooth. The water side has a little bit of a ripple to it. So uh, you, want, you want to put that up if you, if you can remember to do that. Okay, that piece is in there. So we need to cut one more of these. Here again, cut the pointed end off. Slide this in. Mark it with your pen. Take and cut it. That goes in here. All right, so if we've done this right, this piece here, which is our one and three quarter, should slide right in here. And there it goes. So that's a that's a good start. Push it down. And now we'll cut a piece to go across the back of that, and then we'll get ready to make the second layer. So this piece here goes in here like this. And we mark it. Take and trim it again. Flat side of the pliers or the cutters. Set it in here. Put a couple pins in it right here. So that gives you an idea how, to, how we're going to do it. So we're going to put two more rows of these, just like this. We're going to stagger the glass back and forth so we don't have any two sets of lead on, on top of each other. They'll be moved over or offset from each other. Then after we do that, uh, I'll just go off camera and finish that up. And when we get down to the bottom here, we'll come back on and show you how to finish up the bottom of it. All right, we've got this almost filled up, but I wanted to show you uh, why I wanted to stop this and let you look at this. This, this set of lead right here, you notice that if you can see right here, it's cut back much further than we cut this lead for these. The reason for that is that's going to be a piece of U-came that goes around the edge. See if I can show it to you there. See how much wider this is right here than this little gap here for this one? So in that case, we need to have enough room for this to come down against it when you put a piece of U-came in there. So that's why these are shorter. So you don't want to you don't want to put that in there too long and then you can't get your end piece in. So we're just going to go ahead and stick these in here. Here again, we're staggering all the joints so we don't have any together. All right, so that's the last one there. And then we're going to put this last one in here. Goes in just like that. Then we're going to take this piece of uh, U came and we're going to cut it to fit in here. That's just a little bit too long right there. So just a very little trim on it. I'm going to put it in there and slide it up. I have a little block of wood right here, which is from this form. I'm going to set it in here. I'm going to take my hammer. Here again, very lightly, give it a little couple taps down. Earlier on, we talked about the T-square, the little, little blue T-square. I'm going to bring this back into play here, and I want to put this here, and I want to be sure that this is square here, which it is. You could use it just a little tap right there. Then we take our pins, and we're just going to push this down right here. Okay, we got one other thing we're going to do here. I like to break this up right here. And when I break that up, I mean, I like to put a piece of lead down here. But we've made this solid here. So the way we're going to do that, and I'll show you, it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a cheater, but this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take our T-square and I mark the center of this, of uh, the project. I'm going to mark it right here. Put a line on here like that. Then I'm going to take a piece of h came. If this one's long enough, it'll be perfect. Whoop! Threw it on the floor. That's not good. All right, we're going to trim off the pointed part of it. Then I'm going to take my cutters. I'm going to go right in here and I'm going to cut the heart out of it. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim this off if it's got any little high point on it. Then I'm going to set it in here against where my line is. 
And as you can see that it's too long, so I'm going to take and trim it very slowly, just a little bit at a time. I'm going to sit in here like this. Still too long. That's what we're looking for right there. Push it in here in a little nice and tight so it doesn't go anywhere. And that breaks that up. The reason I like to do that, one, uh, I don't like the big gap where this is just this is this is there. And two, remember our cotter pins back underneath here. This helps strengthen this corner right here because uh, these things, when they're all together, are fairly heavy. And if all right, we're back. So we're gonna go ahead and solder this up now. And uh, over here on uh, this side here, we've got a few things. We've got our stainless steel brush. We've got our soldering flux and we've got our solder. Uh, this comes in a one pound roll. Uh, this is a 60-40 uh, solder that I like. It uh, melts uh, nice and smooth. And it uh, melts a little, little quicker than uh, say the 50-50. This is a 60-40. So uh, the reason I just cut it in strips like this is and some of these have been used, is that uh, if you're soldering a big project and you're holding onto this roll the whole time, it gets pretty heavy after a while. So we've had our soldering iron plugged in. It's up to its optimum temperature, which is in this case 700 degrees. So we're going to take our stainless steel brush and we're going to brush all of our joints right here. What we're doing, we're knocking off any oxidation that may have accumulated on the lead itself. Uh, and it comes from just the air. And if you, if, uh, if you, sometimes if you don't do this, the solder won't flow real good. And uh, you'll, you'll think there's something wrong with the solder or something's wrong with your soldering iron. And usually it's just that the lead's a little bit dirty. Uh, in the old days now, this used to be really critical because uh, the lead uh, at that time really oxidized easily. So we've got all our joints that are, uh, have been hit with the brush. Now we're going to take our flux and we're just going to put a little dab on it. Be sure to get every joint with a, with some flux on. If you don't do that, when you get ready to solder it, the solder won't stick to it. It'll just kind of gob up. So we don't want to do that. As far as soldering goes, it's one of those things where practice, practice, practice. And uh, the more you practice that or the more you do, uh, the smoother it gets and uh, you get the technique down. So, so I'm just going to use a small strip of this. I usually cut it off the roll maybe uh, 8 to 10 inches long. And one reason I like to cut it off the roll is I can take my iron. This is the Waller 700 degree tip iron. I can take my iron and uh, I can go right down onto where I want to go here. So uh, I'm going to put just a, a little bit of solder right there. So we're going to start right here. I'm going to put this down on here and I just want to get on it. Give it a little bit of a tut. Just get on it. You don't want to stay on it too long because you'll burn a hole in it. 700 degrees is just about the max for the lead. After you do this for a while, you get a feel for what, how long to keep it on there and for the size of the bead that you want to make. The uh, bead is determined by how much lead you put on, or how much solder you put on here. So uh, we want to keep it, uh, we're going to keep it somewhat uniform. This makes it easier for me to control it with this little stick. So we're going to go down here, we're going to do all of these down here. This one here I hear didn't want to come down too good, so I just get a little bit more. 
Uh, you kind of want to look your joints all over if you see any that you don't like. Uh, you can go ahead and like this one here, I want this to flow out here a little bit. Just put your iron on it, let it flow out a little bit. And uh, when you get it all the way you want it, here's one we missed right here. So we get it all laid out here. So we're going to take, and we're going to just take a cloth, and we're going to take it, and we're just going to wipe off some of the excess flux on it. Then we're going to take out our push pins and take this and turn it over. And now we're going to take and we're going to go ahead and use our stainless steel brush again and knock the edges off on it. On the back side now here, one of the things you want to watch out for, because we're going to put the, we're going to be three of these panels and they're going to sit, they're going to, they're going to go edge to edge here. So it's going to be up on an angle like this. So the outside edge here on the back side we're not going to solder this one this one this one or this one uh we're still we're going to just solder everything that's in the middle the reason for that is if you have a little blob of solder right here and you put your next one in here it's liable to push it away and when you put it together you have these big gaps in between it and we don't want it, we don't want to do that so we're going to put a little flux right across here right there all along here down here but not down the sides. And this one right here, I'm not going to solder those two right now, and I'll show you why. A lot of people, when they do the backside, just kind of rush through it and don't, don't really want to do a good job on it because it's going to be hidden. Uh, my theory on that is, it's a great place to, to practice. You got, you're got going to solder it anyway, so do the best job you can. And uh, it's a good practice. So uh, go ahead and solder up the back side just like if it was the front side. Now you notice that when I'm soldering, I'm just going straight down on it. I'm not wiggling it around or moving it around. You don't want to, you don't want to keep moving it around because that's... Uh, uh, not not a good way to do that so just go straight down up okay now we didn't solder these we didn't solder right here i'm going to try to put this sideways so hopefully you can see this so right here what we're going to do we're going to put in what they call a cleat and the cleat basically is going to be something to hold our light here because our solar light is going to sit right here if we don't put something in it for it to rest on this would just fall right through the bottom of it so we don't want to do that so we're going to take a piece of H came like this and I have some medical clamps here that somebody gave me a long time ago they clip on I'm gonna center that just just by eye you don't need to make this super accurate because it's, it's not going to be seen anyway take your pliers or your clamp clamp and stick it on there like that take and put some more flux on here put some flux on here Set it in here. I'm going to try to get out of the way so you can see this. The iron has just a little bit of solder left on it, so I'm going to take and stick it right in here. And I'll let this iron flow to the came. Okay. That's all it takes. We'll put that back. Then we're going to take here and we're going to solder this down. I usually fill this in all the way. Uh, you probably could just spot solder just a couple places and be happy with it. So, but uh, I kind of like to finish it off. Okay, so that's that. So we got our cleat in there. So we're going to wipe that down. The uh, back side here, uh, where these where these two are at here, you can we can take and, and solder those. Uh, we can take and solder these shut if you want to. Just take your iron, put it, put a little bit of solder on it, and just set it right in here and let it flow. Just close those off. Now, I like to take our cleat here and just trim this on like a little 45 here. Uh, the reason for that is the edges get sharp on it, so you want to kind of trim them up a little bit. 
Okay, on the other end here now, we've got some lead sticking down. We've got a couple offerings. One, we can just cut it off and leave those open, or we can take and do this. We're going to put it in here. We're going to trim it here, trim it there. We're going to trim it there, and we're going to trim it here. We got a little point there, and then we're just going to take it on our work table, and we're going to push that down like that. That closes that area up there. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. That was a little bit too long. So we're going to come in and we're going to trim it here, trim it here, cut it to a point. Knock that off. Okay, take and set it in here. We're just going to bend it back down. Now, you remember we talked a little bit about the third hand? Well, this is where third hand comes in. Set that right there, and we're going to put our project in here. And we're going to take and we're just going to make it a little bit tight against it. Not enough to break it, though. We want to be careful. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to fill in these, these bottoms. So we're going to take a little bit of flux here. We're going to take some solder. We're just going to come in here right here like that. And we're going to come in here with this right here. Okay. Now we could leave it just like that. I'm going to take and uh, go off camera and put this on a, uh, an 80 grit sandpaper and knock that down flat. But I'll show you that when we come back. On this side here, we've got a little gap here on the top. So we're going to fix that. So we just put a little pressure here. We're going to put a little flux here and then around our cotter pin here or our hanger. We're going to put a little right there. We're just going to take a little piece of solder, put it right there. Here we're going to put some solder on the iron. Just hold it and just let it drop in there like that. So we not only have that leg running underneath here that would have to be pulled out, but now we've soldered it in here. So that's going to be a hanger for the, for the life of the product. This side over here, uh, I just kind of let it flow into there. Just take your iron and put a little solder on it and just let it go in here. Just like that. All right, so we'll come back. And we'll... Okay, so here's our panel now. We've got it all cleaned up. We went over and filled the holes up. We took and sanded them down flat. Made uh, just a little bit of a curved edge on them. That just kind of helps finish off the product so it looks a little bit nicer. Uh, we don't have any gaping holes or so forth in it. So uh, you notice how we, we staggered all the glass so we don't have anybody running in a straight line. So the other two panels we make, we're going to stag we're going to stagger the glass also. So this will give you a chance to, uh, to mix them up and to do some fun things with it. Uh, one last thing we're going to do here, and we'll do that in the next video. Uh, right on the bottom of this, we're going to put a little lip right here. It's going to look like that. It'll be soldered on here. And what that's for is that we're going to put a bottom in this. We'll put a piece of white glass, uh, opaque glass in the bottom of it. The reason for that is if you don't do that, when, you, when your light turns on, it'll start out real bright up here at the top. It'll get a little bit dimmer and it'll be really dim here because it's a single point light. It goes straight down. So we need something to reflect or bounce it back. So we're going to put a bottom in here and that will kind of evenly light all of these uh, glass pieces rather than just some of them as, as, the, uh, as we go down. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and do that on, on the next little video and show you how to put that on there. All right, we're going to get ready to put our little uh, cleat on the bottom here to, that'll, that'll, that'll hold the bottom piece of glass in here. Uh, I marked the center of our little panel here. So this is what the cleat looks like. It's just made out of a piece of thin sheet metal. Uh, this is bought at the hardware store. It's usually over by where all the galvanized pipes and so forth are for ducking. So it's just a little little tiny thin sheet. You notice I marked a line on here. This is going to line up with the top of the came here. The reason for that is if you go all the way down to the bottom, uh, what will happen is that this little edge here will be showed. Because if you remember, the came is curved. So we're going to set this right in here like this. 
And then we're going to bring that line up to the top here, right there. Going to take our little block of wood. Going to take a couple stick pins. Push them in there. We're going to take our flux. Put a little bit on here. Take our soldering iron. Put a little solder on it. Put it in here like that. And just let it go back and forth. This is one of the few times that you want to go back and forth with your siren iron. Okay, and just let it go. Leave it just like that. Take and wipe it off. And that's all there is to it. So that'll hold our that'll hold the glass bottom in the uh, into the project. This is what it looks like on the other side, right here. If if you didn't pull it up to where that line was, this would be sticking over where the crown is here, and it would be a sharp edge. So we don't want to do that. So That'll that'll uh, go ahead and uh, and hold that together for our for our bottom for our our project. Uh, on the next video, we're actually going to put it together, and then we'll be just about done. All right, we've got our three panels made. Uh, they came out real nice for us, so uh, we're going to set those aside, and we're going to bring in just a little fixture I made to put this together with. Uh, you can do this without this fixture. It's a little more difficult because it's uh, you have to hold the hold the lines on it. So, but basically the fixture looks like this. It's just a, on a 60 degree angle here. These two slots, and uh, we put it in here like this. And our panels sit in on the 60 degrees like this. This forms a V where the two cames come together, where the two U, U cames come together. You just take your flux. Just flux that down. Take your solder. You just come in here, right here on the joints between the two pieces of cane. And just give it a couple little solder joints. Just solder them right down here. Just like that. Down here at the end, because this area here is, is, is open, I kind of just go ahead and just flow this right in here like that. Just like that. Okay, now, after we got the first one together, we're going to get ready and we're going to uh, put the second piece in. For that... I put a glove on here, primarily because sometimes uh, you need to hold this together a little bit. So we're going to take our third panel now, and we're going to take it. This is going to slide in here like this. Our third panel is going to slide in right here, and it's going to do the same exact same thing as we did before. You just want to uh, adjust them to make sure that they're right where you want. As far as the down pieces go, that looks pretty good there. Okay, now it's going to be a little hard to see here. Uh, I might bring the camera down just for a second here and show you what this looks like in here. I'm going to drop the camera down. I'm going to hand hold it here and show you what we're doing right here. Uh, so now we've got the V slot right here. And right here, this will be the area we're going to solder next. This is why I was saying when we started to build this is how important it is that we go ahead and uh, make sure that these are all square. Because if they're not square, when you go to line this up right here, they won't line up and uh, it won't come out very nice. So we'll go ahead and solder this one here. Okay, so we've got the, the second panel soldered. Now this top one up here, right here, this one here, we'll turn it over and we'll put it in our little jig, and then we'll go ahead and solder that one. And to get this to solder, uh, you just take your solder and uh, you, you pull it out and you just take and run it inside here. And then you can start to solder it. So, so you just pull off a bunch of it and you can solder it right back as you go here. So we'll go ahead and turn this over and then we'll get ready to make the last uh, solder joint. Okay, so I moved the camera back up on top here. So uh, this, is the next, this is the next joint we're going to make. You can see by, even though it's not even soldered yet, by, by having them nice and square, how, the, how they come together on the edges here and there's no, there's no gaps to them. 
Uh, if you, if you, we talked about soldering the inside ones. If you do that, you end up with a gap that looks like this. And when, when that is uh, there, uh, the solder will not will fall through it. Also, uh, at nighttime, the light comes through it. So we don't want that. So we're going to turn this one over. We're going to put it in our jig. We're going to push it down and adjust it so that it's nice and tight. We're going to take our flux again. Flux it up. Make sure it's lined up where you want it. We're going to take our solder. We're going to run it through the, pull it out. We're going to run it through here. And we're going to just take it right here. And we're just taking solder this right here. And we'll go down just a little bit further and solder it inside. And then way down at the end here, we'll just take and put a little solder on our iron, hold the ends together, and we'll let that soldered iron just melt the solder right, right together. Okay, so we're bringing this back up here and we'll finish off this one right here. There we go. Okay, so that pretty much finishes that up. This is what our finished piece looks like now. So it made the three sided, has our little Things on the bottom here for our piece of glass is going to be in there as a reflector. And in the top here, uh, if we've done this right, our, our uh, solar panel, pull this over here so we can see it. Our solar panel should fit right in here. And let's see if we did this right. So there it goes. So that's the solar panel. So that's how it's supposed to fit in. There's, the cleats here will hold that in there. So uh, you don't have to worry about the uh, light falling through it. So we'll go ahead and wash this up. And uh, from there, we'll go ahead and put the bottom in it and put a chain on it. And then we'll be all done with the project. Okay, let's finish this project up. I cut the, uh, the bottom for it. It's just a little piece of uh, white glass. It's opaque. And it's going to go in the bottom here. It's going to sit on these little tabs from the inside. So the way we're going to do that... We're going to take some silicon seal here, and we're just going to put just a little blob right there, a little blob right there, and a little blob right there. And we're going to take, we're going to slide this inside here, like that. And then we're just going to turn it up on its end and let it fall in place. Now, if you see it down inside there, it'll, it'll take and glue itself to those little tabs. If you want to, can take one of your form sticks and stick it in here and just push it down against there a little bit. Uh, I left gaps around the edges of it on purpose because uh, these are outside when it rains the water can flow right through them. Uh, so don't try to make that too tight and that was cut using our 60 degree triangle to measure that out. So now uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our chain on and our chain is made up of a, uh, a series, it has a, a split ring here, has a ball bearing swivel here, then it has another smaller split ring, and this is a 16 gauge uh, jack chain that you buy at the hardware store, uh, and it works very nicely. So the hangers we put on here, which we made out of our cotter pins, are going to go like this. Going to take your, open up your jack, and then just stick it in here. Take a pair of long nose pliers, and just take and you close the close the loop up like that. We're going to take our next chain. We're going to stick it in here. Maybe. I usually do this with, it, with the chain hanging up, so it's a little bit harder to do it down here in front of the camera. 
close up your loop. And then their last one here is going to go over here. I'm going to put it in here. We'll close it up. There we go. So now we're ready to go ahead and hang this. We have our chain on here. So we're all set. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take this into our laundry room, which we can make go dark just like if it was going to be outside. And we'll light this up and then we're going to be through with the project. Here's our solar light all put together, all polished up, ready to hang outside. And here's what it's going to look like when the night comes on. So if you have a area where that might turn, you're going to get that reflection off the wall. So I hope you've enjoyed working with the project and I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks a lot.